when it comes to stress, we'll always hear it. And, and what I don't never want someone to to go through is getting stressed about being stressed. You can there's a, there's a stage where people are so neurotic, um, uh, maybe slightly of a hypochondriac where they their cortisol goes up simply thinking about how stressed they are. That so first of all, stress is multi component. We're gonna look at it's such a simple matter, but don't let this be one of those videos. I'm gonna try help it as it applies to your fat loss and your training. Now, first of all, what we need to understand is the negative effects of what stress does with your fat loss. Chronically elevated cortisol basically increases your appetite, increases your cravings, increases your rate of emotionally and stress eating. Because when we eat these foods, they make us feel less stressed, etc. And then you get a vicious cycle from there. On the other side of the equation, if we're trying to eat less calories, on the other side where we're trying to burn more, chronically elevated stress decreases your energy, will probably make you sick more, decrease, eats away your muscle mass, um, your metabolism, or oh, and all the hormones that you need elevated, it's gonna it's gonna dampen those. So you're basically pissed against the wind if you're trying to lose fat and you, your stress is very elevated. Everyone will have a certain stress tolerance. It's called your allostatic load. So if we look at all the different stresses we kind of have, we have financial, we have family, uh, relationship, friends, trainings of stress, calorie deficits of stress. There's gonna be all these different stresses come in. Someone will get to the stage where if you look at a bathtub and all that water's gone in the bathtub, at a certain stage, your bathtub will overflow. And from a health consequence point of view, whatever you are prone to, for, so for myself, it's like asthma, maybe anxiety, when I get very stressed, that's what you will be pushed towards or, or a burnout or whatever it is when it comes to that. So from a health point of view and obviously from a fat loss point of view as well. Now, we want to still train even when stress we are under stress from work and other aspects. So how do we do that? Hello, how are you? And obviously if you're watching, you have any questions on training, nutrition, whatever, put in the box below and I'll always answer them. So how do we work out or how do I approach the topic with my clients? Now I work, my face-to-face -face clients are probably more high executives, high strong, they're always on the go, they wanna smash training, they wanna smash work after. If I simply tell them, look, Mr. Jones, you just need to relax, like you're a bit stressed, he'll tell me to go up myself. So for people, especially these kind of people that have been more analytic, we can use a few different things. We can actually look at a measure of stress and it's called your heart rate variability or your HRV. Some of these um, things are hooked up to it, like your Apple Watch, your garments. But if you want to get a proper reading on your heart rate variability, you have to get a chest strap. Okay, now it's a good investment, it's like a hundred dollars, whatever it is. The whoop bands give you a measure of your heart rate really, whoop bands, and then some other the new technologies that are coming out, they all give you a sense of how it is. So your heart rate really basically when you have a high heart rate variability, it shows you are less stressed. Your recovery capabilities are very good. So you're all, you're kind of optimal health. And even on that, they've linked high heart rate variability with like every positive and marker of your health and longevity overall. If you have a low heart rate variability, a low record of heart rate variability, it means your body's in stress, okay? So we're gonna use these numbers, I'm gonna use these metrics. So if someone has a low heart rate variability, if we look at how we're gonna set up their train and how I do with my clients, a low heart rate variability means a stress, so we need to add more things in there that are going to bring that heart rate variability up or make them less stressed. So some ways that, uh, I'll talk about outside of training and I'll talk about how to train around the first. So some ways to basically decrease your stress and bring your heart rate very badly up. Um, in no particular order and people or my clients, I'll just tell them a list of things and they'll pick whatever's easiest for them. The main rocks are obviously your sleep, getting your adequate nutrition and hydration. In regards to nutrition, that means getting enough protein, that means eating enough carbohydrates to fuel your performance, that means making sure you're not deficient in anything. So you might be vegan or vegetarian. Common deficiencies might be iron, zinc, um, uh, magnesium. Uh, oh, did I say iron? And if you want to look at that further, go get blood tests. Make sure those bases are covered because they're obviously like the building blocks for your overall health and your recovery, etc. They, they're all the micro minerals and vitamins that you need to, to recover properly. 
So you look at your blood tests, you might look at your micronutrients, and then you might, with your nutrition, make sure you're getting enough omega-3s, eating more oily fishes, and covering the bases that way with your nutrition, training, sleep, and my top tips for sleep would be make sure you get sunlight in the morning. If it is like it is now, the last few days very gloomy, that doesn't mean you're not going to get any on, uh, sunlight on your eyes. It just means you need to increase the time you're out there because the clouds block it slightly. And that's the first marker. People always go, I need to take magnesium at night. First thing in the morning, get sunlight in your eyes. Exercise that day or some kind of activity. Create a dark environment at night. And then try to chill out before bed. That would be my kind of my top tips before you look at anything else. Hydration, sleep, and nutrition. Okay, they're the big rocks. Then the other ones we, we can put on after. There might be some kind of hot or cold therapy. So hot therapy might be saunas, that might be hot baths, magnesium baths is a way of getting a bit more magnesium in there. Cold therapy might be cold showers, and we can contrast the two. Really good for your nervous system, heat, stress, all these kind of stresses that are very good for your body to help you recover. Um, and then a cold stress could be cold showers, it could be ice baths, um, all the way up to cryotherapy, whatever whatever you can you can manage. We can look at other ways for your body to recover, massages, whatever kind of massage you prefer, doesn't really matter, they're all actually good. Um uh meditation could be deep breathing getting out of nature um chilling out could be naps the heap of different ways if, if you just look at recovery parasympathetic activities could be reading could be charity socializing all these other ways to recover so throughout the day on top of our big rocks we want to add as much of the stuff in as possible pick whatever activities are most realistic for you okay and i'm going to speed through this in case my client comes um so what some simple ways what I tell my clients to do could be after training they do get in the shower and then they fluctuate between the hot water and the cold water could be they go and get a sauna after training could be they get, they book in for massage regularly could be they book in for social outings some kind of charity um get out in nature uh, on the their lunch break leave their phone behind um chill out and night, play with the kids play with their pets, all these funny things I mentioned, see what's most realistic for you to add into your lifestyle. Now, people may say, okay, these are very small percentage. Yeah, but all these little things add up over time to really bring that cortisol down, increase your recovery capabilities. Not only in terms of fat loss, but when it comes to training, people think, okay, I train hard, therefore I get, I'm gonna get strong, I'm gonna increase my performance. But what people forget is training is just a stimulus you won't get the rewards of that stimulus unless you recover so the training bits the stimulus but when you recover that's when you actually make your progressions whether it's someone always rings me you don't hear from anyone the whole day and then suddenly you're going live and everyone's ringing you um yes so that so, so your recovery is when you actually get read the rewards of that training so you could train hard if you're not recovering and when i say recover that means your cortisol should be low if your cortisol is high your body's in a stressful state and it's not in a rest and recovery that's the opposite of rest and recovery so in terms of fat loss all these other factors factors as well now when it comes to training how do you base your training around your stress stress is a part of life so we need to regulate it so that doesn't push us over the edge and make that stress worse so you can use your heart rate variability, or if you don't have access to that, you can also use your resting heart rate. So get your resting heart rate, maybe get an average of a week, um, look at what your average number is. And when you take that in the morning again each day, if your heart rate is higher, your body's probably under a little bit more stress. So you could say, okay, my heart rate variability is low. Other ways to measure it are, um, are you a bit more irritable? Is your motivation down? There's these other, how's your motivation to train? There's these other metrics we can use as well. And you can use them all together. If your heart rate variability is low, so you're very stressed. On the whoop bands, I know they give a measure of like red. So red stop, orange is kind of go, and green is go. If you're on the whoop band and it says red, or your heart rate variability is low, you're getting from a chest strike. That means that day needs to be activities where it's going to help you recover in terms of your training that may look like 
a mobility day, a yoga day that may look like a lower intensity cardio day and where you're keeping your heart rate between that 120 to 150 range where it's low intensity but you're still burning calories in terms of fat loss as well. And on that day, the activities we talked about, they need to be more um, profound on those days to help you bring that recovery up. If you measure your heart rate variability and it's in the medium zone, the medium number, that's a day where it's kind of a medium intensity session. So it might be like an upper body day or it might be kind of like an aerobic day again or it might be like an aerobic intervals day where it's not quite a really high intensity intervals but it's kind of like you're going from 130 beats per minute up to 150 and then working between that zone. So it's still still feel like you're working but physiologically it's not big stress in the body. If your heart rate variability is high for that for a day, that's the day where you can train hard, very hard. So that may be your really high intensity intervals. That may be your heavy leg sessions. That may be your hard full body training sessions. And you can regulate your training throughout the week based on your recovery. If you don't have access to that, you can use the other metrics we talked about, resting heart rate, irritability, motivation to train etc to give you it naturally what i'll do i'll set someone's training up for most people they probably have two hard days in them per week so let's say for example tuesday and thursday someone's hard days so that might be the leg days that might be a really hard full body days that might be the interval days or could be like weights and then finish with some intervals that's your two hard days on the monday it might be like a medium day where we do say an upper body day. So it could be upper body, medium day, Tuesday, hard day, Wednesday, easy day, yoga, mobility, lower intensity stuff. Thursday's back to your hard day, Friday, medium day, Saturday, easy day, and you might take Sunday off. Um, it's kind of similar to an approach. Charlie Francis is a famous strength coach used to talk about where he talk about a high low system we talk about easy day hard day easy day hard day and in fact his was sprinting so he would only let his athletes sprint it sprint because you want the quality of that to be high if you sprint and your mechanics are off you're going to make your performance worse so he his experience would be able to do it but he would look at he would know from looking at the sprinters being like not nah, not today go and do something else and only on the days where that peak and 100 percent would he let them sprint but that's just a way i would program it out and then if you can use those that other um information that would feed into more individually what what you would do in those days but um that could give you a framework for both but there you go yeah so so for overall fat loss health and performance um i will be looking at regulating your training it's why i always shit on uh, and slate F45 or these high intensity classes that are high intensity every day. You cannot train like your 10 out of 10 intensity every day. You're going to burn yourself out. Okay, so focus more on quality of maybe one or two sessions per week. And then the rest are just making up the quantity of sessions. So you get a nice little mix of both. But if you you can't train hard, you're going to burn yourself out. You're going to get injured. Um, and a lot of the time, because I get these clients from the class, th these high intensity classes, they train really hard, which is a really big stress in the body, combined with all these other stress I talked about. And then by the end of the week, they're binging the house down because all these stress hormones are through the roof. And they've just ruined the whole week's deficit and then they're back to the start. And repeat, rinse and repeat. So there you go. Hopefully um, that sound was better. As I said, I did one just before this and it was a, it was a joke because my computer was on making mad noises. If you just missed this, go back and rewatch. I'm going to post that as an IGTV. But yeah, just a short little intro on how I approach stress and training and nutrition um, with my own coaching clients to hopefully get a little bit of insight that you can apply to your own training. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to DM me. Um, and I'll be doing these more regularly and I'll give you a little bit more of uh, time in future. I know a lot of people are waking up Monday morning and probably don't want to see my big head. But there you go. 
I hope that helped. You can apply to your own training and we'll talk to you all soon.